It was a night where Jake Odorizzi took the mound and all the doubt and all the fears of Astros Nation came to fruition, but it actually didn't. Jake Odorizzi dealt and pitched a heck of a game tonight in Arlington. The Astros responded and supported him with runs, Eric, a starting pitcher that does well and supported with runs. It is the formula that brings success. And let's hope that this turns things around for Jake because in a six-man rotation and 33 games in 34 days, we are going to need his arm. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram at Astros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, especially when Jake and the offense go off, always Stros. All righty, so I guess we got one day where we can say, all right, we're not going to DFA Jake Odorizzi today. <laughs> I mean, he came out and pitched his butt off, and I you can't really say anything about the game. Even uh, when Adolis Garcia hit that home run, he's crushed the Astros in what uh, – in like 18 career games or something, he has eight home runs against the Astros or some crazy. Number oh like yeah, that. he is an Astros killer. He is he is the new Albert Pujols type guy. I mean, I mean, good thing the Rangers aren't a contender. Good lord. Well, uh, let's not bash the Rangers too much because we don't have that many more wins than they do at this point. So true. Let's wait till we put a little bit. Put them in the rearview mirror a little bit before we do that. But you know what we can do? We can thank everybody for making us your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, make sure you keep on subscribing to us. And uh, just go and press that little red button. Go and give us a like while you're at it. And go and listen to us on your way to work, on your way home to work, on whatever you do. Just listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Just check out the Locked on Astros podcast and make us your first listen. And no, we're not going to say one bad thing about Jake Odorizzi today. It's going to be a Jake Odorizzi slander free day. Okay. He <laughs> deserves it for one yeah. day, one day. Well, here's the thing. It's not that we expect Jake Odorizzi to be perfect. And it's not that we want Jake Odorizzi to fail. It's just, he has not been good up to this point. Now, um, he has potential to be a very good, well, he has potential to be a good pitcher. Okay. Okay. Um, he has shown flashes of greatness, but it has been a couple of years since then. And ever since he's been in an Astros uniform, it has been to the chagrin of a lot of Astros fans. Like when he gets up, they're like, oh, what is he going to do now? How many runs is he going to give up? Is he going to last one inning? Is he going to give up four or five runs in the first inning? And the great thing about this team and this staff and these coaches is they're going to come in each game with a game plan and execute. And I can tell you that I know for a fact that someone like Jake Odorizzi that is struggling is going to go and he's going to attack the areas and improve on the areas where, where he was lacking. I mean, we had a conversation last night and the people will see it later on the week with, um, with um, Jonathan Sprinkle from the hooks. And he talked to us about the ups and the downs of pitching. So we're going to have it. We need Jake Odorizzi to be dependable, especially right. in this huge stretch. So if you um, go ahead and look at uh, what happened today, he pitched great. It was six innings. He um, only allowed one hit, one earned run, one walk, four strikeouts. And nobody's going to come out and say it. But you, I think the Astros sent a message by uh, DFA Pedro Baez. They send a message that say, we don't care how much we owe you. We'll oh, talk about that in a little bit. We don't care how much you owe you. If you aren't performing, we, we're going to go and get rid of you. And so uh, I know James. there's a little bit of confusion about what James Click actually said about uh, Pedro Baez. I know uh, McTaggart said one thing, then he retracted that and said, oh, mm -hmm. wait, uh, a little clarification. But we'll talk about that in a second. This is uh, Odorizzi talk. And guys, I'm kidding about the one day. Odorizzi gets at least 
four more days till his next start. But no, I'm the one in the podcast that has been saying, give this guy a chance. Uh, Jay, uh, Dusty Baker has been saying, yeah, I can't, I can't pull this guy after three starts. That would be the shortest uh, leash in history. You've got to give a veteran guy like this a chance. And what did he do? He came out, I believe, in the first inning. He threw, what, nine pitches or eight pitches or something like that? One, two, three inning. That's the Jake Odorizzi that he's supposed to be. Will he be like that every game? No. Will he have some ups and downs? Yeah. But if he pitches like this every time, the Astros have a much better chance of winning. And this game was a much better example of Astros baseball than we've seen hardly any of the time this year. Right. And if you look at their Aprils, historically, they hit in the mid 200s. But this year, they were hitting 211 going into this game. You know, Kyle Tucker, Eric, this guy is seven for his last 13 at bats in the last two games. You know, there's, we're sitting there. They're asking us why did Jake Odorizzi get pulled? Was really? was eighty five pitches too oh, many really? for him? His what? last start, he only lasted what two thirds of an inning, one third of an inning. He only threw like twenty nine pitches. Well, so he's not built well, up. Right, exactly, and that's what I was. That's what I was trying to get at with his with his innings pitch. Literally, he's <laughs> he's only thrown. I mean, four innings is is the longest he's lasted. Eric, he's thrown thirteen innings up into up until this game. Right. And so it is it is phenomenal to see him get this because when you hear him in his interviews post game, you can tell that the wheels are turning. You can tell that he is very frustrated with the lack of production that he's been able to give. Now, in this stretch, would he have gotten any more wins the way the offense is, has been performing? Probably not, but you at least want to go out and give your team a fighting chance. You know, we talk about JV should be three and zero right now, but at least every time he's pitched, he's given his team a chance to win. And when you go against someone that has a go against a team like the Rangers, the Rangers are always going to play up to the Astros. They're never going to have the Astros play down to them because they come out and they are gamers. That their their head coach Woodard is all about it. I know that Garcia, man, he loves hitting against this Astro pitching. It's just a good thing that when he hit that home run, there wasn't anybody else on base. Yeah, and I know a lot of people are saying this is probably Odorizzi's best start since he's been in a Houston Astros uniform. I would say probably so. I know there's some good starts at, at, during stretches um, last year where he looked pretty good. But I would say overall, this is one of his best appearances as a Houston Astros pitcher. So, um, yeah, if he can it's probably do- since 2019, Eric, because 2020 he was injured. He didn't pitch that much. He came over here and he remember he had the irregular start to the year. He had his struggles. And so, yeah, I would say since 2019, this is probably the best outing that he's had. Um, last year, the deepest he went into a game, he did pitch two six inning games. Uh, one of them was versus Cleveland. The other one was versus the Yankees. He lost the Yankees game. It, uh, he gave up two runs on seven hits. Uh, the other one, he gave up uh, four hits. He gave up one earned run, two runs to the Indians. Uh, but that was the deepest he went last year. Um, the fewest hits he gave up last year was in five and one thirds innings. He gave up um, three hits. Uh, then in, later in the year against the Mariners, he gave up two hits um, in five innings. And so he had some good performances last yeah, year. We just remember the stinkers. Right. Well, I mean, he wasn't he wasn't stellar. He was he was decent. Right. Um, you know, since we're since we're talking about pitching, Eric, I want to send a shout out to one of our most faithful listeners, and they listen from New Braunfels, Texas, and it's a family that I met last year. Um, the mother, the father are heavily involved with their daughter. Their daughter's name is Addie, and her name is Addie Barbosa. She is an up and coming fast pitch softball player. She's actually recovering right now from an injury. She's at 40 to 50 percent. I just wanted to send her well wishes from us at Locked On Astros. Thank you for listening to our show. And Addie, we wish you all the success. We know you haven't gotten back in the circle yet, but you're working hard. Um, your mom sent some videos showing me 
um, how you're working through this and continued success can keep grinding and use things like this when the Astros go through struggles and they come out of them as points of encouragement. So thanks for making us your first listen to the Barbosa family in New Braunfels, Texas. All right. To kind of wrap up on this conversation, Oda Rizzi, because we need to switch to the hitting side because the Astros wouldn't have oh, yeah. won without the hitting. But Larry DGM brought up some good points. There were some deep drives off of Oda Rizzi. And if they were just a little bit further, maybe a couple of feet, uh, they would have been home runs. But luckily, they're able to stay in the yard. So there was a little bit of luck involved with Oda Rizzi's start as well. But the, at the end of the day, you give up one home run. You pitch six innings, give up one run. That's a great start. So you know what? It's like he um, he just had some athletic greens, and he just woke up and ha- started day great. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because athletic greens are amazing. I actually consume them. I do this on a daily basis. They are really good for you. I mean, you could go and get like 75 different vitamins and you could get all these other supplements and you could eat a ton of fruits, but you probably aren't going to get what you need here. Let me tell you why. Because with one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and antigens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all these things. Why do I consume them? Because they actually taste good. You put it in 12 to 16 ounces of water. You down it before you eat anything, then get your day started, and you just feel better. It gives you that energy. The importance of multivitamins are great because you will realize that without them, you're just missing something. Um, They don't have any GMOs in them. There's no nasty chemicals, no artificial flavor. The price is there. And let me tell you what they're doing. To make it easy for you, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free year supply, one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash MLB network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance today. Athletic Greens, AG1, go get them. All righty. Thank you for making the Locked on Astros podcast your first listen. You know what you should make your second listen? The Locked on Now podcast. They do a great job recapping all the MLB games all across the league. And you want to know what's going on across the league? I'm sure maybe the Locked on Yankees will be talking about the letter or will Stacy be talking about it? Who knows? But you get to hear about what's going on. What what about that little league ending to the Twins game? I'm sure they're going to be recapping that. So the Locked On Now podcast is a great way of hearing all the action across baseball in a short amount of time. So go check them out. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of action uh, with this Astros game, and it started off uh, really kind of um, – great in the, the second inning, but it just, it, it kind of looked like it was going to be one of those where it's, it's going to be a whole lot of something, but not enough. Like you're stranding some runners, but then you're not getting the runners in again. But uh, the Astros finally broke through with a lot of runs in the fourth inning with three runs. And uh, one of the big reasons for that was Kyle Tucker, Kyle Tucker, He's kind of been playing with the gloves and he's been going uh, gloveless with the gloves on. But today, that was a blast. That was like it was on the tee. He knew exactly oh, yeah. where I was going to go. I believe it was 426 feet, 111 yes. uh, miles per hour off the bat, something like that. That was a no doubter. I'm, I I think the outfielder well, just turned around and looked and that was just awesome. Yeah. Um, Hearn basically teed that up for him. That pitch was was center cut right in his zone. It was when you go back and watch the replay, you could have hit that with a broomstick. It was just right there. And when he hit it, he knew it was gone. And you love seeing Tucker doing it. Like I mentioned in the intro, seven for his last 13 or 14, I believe, at bats. And someone's like, well, you can't really say Tucker's hot. No, I can say Tucker is swinging a hot bat right now. He has completely turned things around. And Jordan Alvarez, oh, look, what is he? He's three for his last six or four right. for his last eight. And 
four seven. And what is it? Because he's played left field twice in a row. Wait, you mean to tell me that when he plays in the field, he hits better? Imagine the logic behind that. I really hope that he doesn't get stuck with maybe two games every six games to play left field. I hope he plays more left field. I think he needs to do more of a 50-50 split on this road trip. I just I don't I don't see why you've got to protect this guy so much unless there's stuff about his knees that we don't know. It's just one of those things that you just like let this guy freaking play. You've got to sh- you got to like lengthen the leash that you give this guy to play because he's better. The offense goes when Jordan Alvarez goes. Kyle Tucker hits. Um, you know, Jeremy Pena got that key single, two outs, right. two strikes, two balls in the second inning. And that got things started. Dolas Garcia kind of tied things up, but then they added on more runs and they kept the Rangers at bay. Yeah. And overall, this, the offense, they only got six hits today, but they were clutch hits. They were hits where you needed Uh, in the game before they got eight hits, but you didn't get them where you needed it. And so that's the difference. Like you got the big clutch hits and the big one was Kyle Tucker. And then you had Yuli Gurriel beating out the double play and that that was overturned in that situation. And so that gave him an RBI, but we don't really care about that because he was on the base. He was on base when Tucker hit that home run. So that was a big, good situation. And then you had, um, uh, you had, what's his name? Um, Adolis Garcia's um, kind of Garcia, sorry. Um, he misplayed that uh, double by Alvarez. And otherwise, if he would have maybe not ran, ran in to try to catch the ball and maybe just made it a normal, I think he misjudged it, or maybe he just saw it coming towards him, but then the ball started carrying more or something, but he misplayed that and that became a double. And so there was a lot of things that went the Astros way in this game. Will that start a streak? Who knows? But if Kyle Tucker starts hitting like we've seen we've seen in the past two days, I know he only got one hit today, but that one hit was a big one. No, yeah. I mean, you know, Alex Bregman one for three, Tucker one for four, Payne one for three, Maldonado one for four, got a hit. He's batting 0, 086. He's on fire. Just joking. Um, I don't want Larry to take me seriously. And, you know, Alvarez two for three today. So Alvarez got his average up to 200. And it, it, if you think me saying that and you hear my voice and I sound excited, it's because Jordan Alvarez has not been hitting well. You know, Jose Siri, wow, he didn't do great in the leadoff spot. And here's the thing. They're going to keep going back and forth with the leadoff spot. Let me ask you this, Eric. We don't I know have a leadoff Alex, hitter. Well, I know. Yeah. I, um, Jose Altuve isn't back yet. He probably won't be back till maybe the Blue Jays series. He's He was on the field. He was hitting. He was taking hits. He's been taking grounders. He's been running. So it looks like he's close to coming back. My question to you is this. Do you think the Astros would be better just continue to jostle the leadoff spot, or do you think they need to just give it to one of these guys and just let them run with it until Altuve comes back? Uh, well, you just give it to somebody who, t- who goes with it. Like uh, McCormick had one good game. Then he struggled. You had Jose Siri. He had one good game that I can remember. Then, uh, he had a couple like tonight. He didn't really do anything. Um, uh, Jeremy Pena would have one good game. So it's hard to judge unless you really just say here, kid, Here's the keys. If the car is yours, just go for it. Right. And the Astros just don't have that guy. I mean, Siri, I mean, honestly, no, Siri's, Siri's not going to play enough. And McCormick, like, that's a platoon. You're not really going to give the leadoff hitter to a platoon. I mean, I would say Penny is the guy, but at the same time, he's, he hit, seems to hit better down at when the bottom of the order. When he's around seventh. Yeah, I just, I'm just wondering if – you know, I don't know how much psychology goes into that. Maybe it's making much ado about nothing. But you would think that putting a guy consistently in a certain spot right. would give him the ability to focus and have that mindset to to have a higher probability to succeed. Do you remember Maybe, AJ Hinch? Well, AJ, yeah, AJ, AJ Hinch. Hinch had a oh, different lineup every day, and, and he even made fun of himself. <laughs> and I understand that. I just, I. I just have wondered personally myself, is that something that would work with an offense that's still trying to find itself? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that once Jose Altuve comes back, he, he needs, he's the leadoff hitter until somebody else just comes out and says, yeah, 
I'm the man. I'm the man. Just give me keys. Let me drive. And I got this. But um, Tucker would be a, I mean, I think Tucker needs to say where he is until he starts really coming out of it. If you would ask me who's the ideal candidate, it's Pena. But Pena just feels, looks more comfortable hitting down at the bottom in order. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what the answer to that question is. But I do have some answers for some uh, stuff that we've been waiting for, the Yankees letter. And uh, we do need to talk about Mr. Pe Pedro Baez kind of getting the ax today. What <laughs> happened there? And he made we'll a talk lot of money about doing that. <laughs> yes, he made a lot more money. So it's like uh, that's why you built your kind of bullpen, your farm system to kind of uh, withstand this. And speaking of that, let's talk about Built Bar. So Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar in the land. And Jake, not Jake Odorizzi, um, Kyle Tucker may not have fully turned things around, but he's getting back in the hot seat. And he's probably consuming Built Bars at a record pace right now because the way he's hitting and I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, you know, they also have these things called built puffs. They are they are protein infused marshmallow puffs wrapped in 100% chocolate. They have cinnamon -y churro in Texas. We love churros, so why not coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie? Built bars are wrapped in 100% chocolate. They're good for you. They don't have a ton of calories. They're not going to burn your diet or mess up your macros if you keep everything in your My Fitness Pal. Whatever you do, most built bars have 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, just a few white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious. All the new flavors are coming out all the time. You'll have to check them out. They have specials, and I want to give you a special right now. Go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com, the best bar in the biz. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of switch towards Pedro Baez. Pedro Baez is somebody that the Astros got with high expectations. He was the Hector Neris, um, so to speak. He was the guy that was supposed to come in, kind of be a kind of a guy come in to be a setup guy, maybe a guy to get some saves occasionally if something happened to Ryan Presley. This was a guy the Astros counted on um, two off seasons ago, I guess we can say. And the Astros have invested a lot of money, and they even gave him a third option year for uh, for 2023. I think it was 7.5 million to if he stayed, and I think a two million dollar opt out if uh, he how if they didn't if they didn't want do, to do that. Okay. How do I or you get a contract like that? Like, how do we Throw get 95 miles per hour? No, I'm talking about with our real world jobs, man. I'm just like. Like, I would love to, like, sign a contract like that and totally stink at my job. And then they go, oh, you're so bad. We're just going to let you walk. And we just won't even keep the money. You, you can have it. <laughs> he, he made so – I'm shocked. I'm actually – that's why I – we had kind of talked about DFA in this guy. Right. I didn't really think – I didn't really think that it was going to be, um, be this quick. Yeah. I mean, he signed that $12.5 million contract with the Astros and he only threw six and two thirds innings over two seasons with the Astros. Yes, he had COVID. Yes, he had the uh, injury issues last year and he didn't pitch much last year. This year he did pitch. He had two bad outings. He had one good outing, but all this week while the Astros were struggling to get outs with the, the, uh, Dusty Baker didn't go to him at all. And so after the game on Monday night, uh, they, Dusty Baker called him in the office and he, they, they basically said, Hey, uh, we're releasing you. And so, um, so his contract included a 7.5 club option for 2023, like I said, and he still owed $2 million buyout for that year. So that he, they still owe him 2 million for that year. And then the, whatever they owe him for the rest of this year, unless somebody so basically basically he's getting twelve million. I mean, yeah. that's basically what they're paying him. Right. So uh, Click said it wasn't a question of effort or work ethic or commitment. Part of the frustration for all of us, I think, is the not knowing where the velocity went. He came to camp in good shape. He did everything we wanted him to do. He worked with Wes, our new trainer, to get some of the velocity back. And just nothing seemed to work. And it was just so frustrating for all of us. But it's definitely not a lack of effort on his part. He's been a tremendous professional throughout this whole entire process. 
You know, he just wanted to be here. He wanted to help us win. He wanted to compete, but it just wasn't coming out. And uh, Brian McTaggart accidentally misread that and said that uh, he tweeted out that said, basically said something about um, that. I forgot what the exact tweet was, but see, it, I didn't even see these tweets. I don't, so I don't, I don't really know what you're talking about. But he, yeah, he, he said that he didn't, uh, it was, he, he wasn't really trying or something. And, but so he had to, he had to retract that and say, wait, mm. sorry, it, it, that's not what uh, click said. But here's what he said. He almost but, went, he almost went ace of spader on him. Yeah. Something like that. But Dusty Baker said it was a tough decision. It just wasn't working. We could, we just couldn't figure out what was the best position to put him in because he was becoming himself, but he wasn't the same guy we signed. He was a, he was the same quality guy off the field. No, I mean, yeah, this isn't, this isn't a personal knock. No, I mean, right. I remember the movie watching, um, watching Moneyball and, you know, when Brad Pitt is playing on um, Billy Bean, he goes, he goes to Jonah Hill and he says, I need you to tell this guy that he's cut. And he's like, what do you mean? That's not my job. He's like, no, you just go in there. And he's like, all right, so let's practice. And so, and so, you know, Jonah Hill's character is trying to come up with all these like things to say. And he's like, why are you saying all that stuff? You just say, here's the papers. Jean will help you up front. She'll tell you what to do. She will, you know, you'll be able to get your stuff and you'll be on your way. And he goes, that's what you do. You just, you cut them and you go. You don't have to explain to them. It's not a sad song. You don't have to sing any praises. You just you just cut them. It's hey, this is baseball. This is business. They know that Pedro Baez got paid this much. Someone's going to gamble on him somewhere. So his career's not over. He made out like a bandit, anyways. And you know you're not going to hit on every person. Who would have thought that the Astros would turn around Montero the way they've done? And right. Montero has really become the superstar of this relief staff this year. He came in, he threw those three balls to his first batter, and then he settled down. You don't normally see guys come in the come in the game to throw 96 and be able to hit a changeup right after that and hit the zone. Amazing stuff. Rafael Montero's quickly becoming my favorite pitcher on this team. And Blake Taylor really showed something today. I know that he kind of had to be bailed out a little bit, but he did come in and settle down after giving up the walk and the hit. He did come in. He did uh, get the next two outs, or but or I forgot exactly how it happened. But he he didn't implode like we've maybe seen in the past couple of days. The Astros bullpen held. They held the lead. That's what all you can ask in this situation. Montero came in and uh, got the final out. Uh, mm -hmm. He, I did think he did allow a walk to load the bases in that situation, but he got the final out in that inning, and then he uh, pitched another inning. So, and then uh, Nerys came in to basically uh, close the game, and it was a great win for the Astros. A much, much needed win. Alvarez had a great game. Tucker had a good game. And uh, Bregman even had a hit uh, and scored two runs at, with a walk. So this exactly. offense is coming around little by little. And uh, like kind of like last April, uh, I know a lot of people are saying this. Uh, Kyle Tucker has been hitting to some bad luck. Alvarez has been hitting to some bad luck. Like in yesterday's game, I remember Alvarez hit a screamer right to a fielder. And, and it's just like the situation right. – it's just but, like bad luck. You know who's not hitting to bad luck? Somebody like Yuli Gurriel. He's well, yeah. But but the but the point I think the more important point with Jordan Alvarez is he hits better when he's in the field. Bottom line, right. I mean, yeah. there's no two ways about it. There's I mean, right. two plus two is always four in the situation. You he's a square peg in a round hole when he's a DH. He's just not as good. All right. I think we stalled enough. You ready? Oh, it's yeah. It's wanna... time for the letter, the Yankee letter, the Lanky letter. Did you we write a got song? a letter. Okay. We All got right. a letter. All right. So here's the thing. <laughs> no, we're not going to go blues clues on this. Let's not, because let me just tell you this, Eric, with this letter. Um, I, I expected the exact reaction that we got from the Yankees organization. And guess who they leaked the letter to first? Andy Martino. Right. A Mets guy who stays nice with the Yankees. Pretty smart. In, you know, in his case, he's trying to sell a book. 
that's heavily slanted towards the Astros. Um, you know, and second thought, I don't think I ever want to talk to this guy on the show. I just, this, this guy, they, I mean, this whole like projection that has been forced on this team. Okay. Because major league baseball covered up what we all knew was true, but we didn't know the details. Can you believe that Dallas Keuchel defeated the cheating Yankees in the 2015 wildcard game? Maybe they're mad because they cheated and they sucked at it. But Brian That's Cashman said that. they did it the right way, and he was crying a few uh, month ago or something what, that the yeah, Astros they, did, what cheated, they cheated them. What they cheated the right way? They cheated like what? I don't know. So, so what's the difference? One one group uses a freaking video room, a replay room that Major League Baseball put in. They use that to steal signs. We used a trash can. So you're saying a trash can is more valuable than a runner on second. So you're saying your players are trash. That's what I get. Cashman is trashman. Okay. And the Yankees and the whole Yankees elk that that have been crying and screaming about the Astros have ruined the integrity of baseball. The Yankees have been cheating since the first TV series was ever broadcasted where they used those cameras to steal signs. So go go jump in the lake, Yankee fan. We're tired of hearing about it. You've been caught red-handed. See, we didn't get caught. We got ratted on by Mike freaking fires. That's how our stuff came out. We didn't get busted by anybody. We got ratted on by a freaking rat. <laughs> I'm pissed, uh, yeah. And that rat's not even in the league anymore. Cause he couldn't stay. Amen. So, uh, but according to the letter, the Yankees in 2015 and 2016 used in their replay room to decode catcher signs on the road and use the replay phone to relay them to a dugout phone that these decoded signs were given to runners on second base who can peek at the catcher or lay the coming pitch to the hitters. And so that's basically same thing that the Astros did minus the trash can. And I know it was real time versus just, this is actually, but you they have were to still know the decoding, sign. They were still decoding dude. The rule for sign stealing using electronic devices has been in place since 1961. It didn't come about in 2017. It has been there right here. I love this. I love this. The biggest crime the Astros committed wasn't sign stealing. It was beating the Yankees at their own game. Oh, my God. I'm going to put that on a shirt. That is awesome. I'm going to screenshot that, and I think I'm going to put that on a shirt, dude. That is phenomenal. This is oh, – this is no, no, yeah. Put it back up there. Um, I don't know where right it is. Here. I got it right here. All right, so – Keep going, Eric. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a picture of this. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I know that somebody else said that. Um, where is it? It confirms where Beltran got the system from. We all knew where Beltran got oh, the system yeah. from. I mean, he he came in and said, "Well, everybody's doing it." The a team. He even said in the um, in the investigation, "Well, a team I previously pay, played for, we're, we were doing it." And he played for Yankees before he came to Houston, so uh, it made sense there. So I, I know that. Uh, that the Yankees basically didn't want this coming out because it kind of portrayed them as cheating and everything. It, it told the truth about right. the Yankees. Let's just, let's just. And that Rob Manfred hid some stuff about what was really going on. And so, so, okay. so, so think about the penalties that were handed down. Okay. Let's just look at the penalties. Red Sox, they, their manager was suspended for a year, right? Um, didn't they also take something from them like like money or did they take draft picks from the Red Sox? Uh, I don't think so, just money. Okay, okay. Like what, like five million dollars? Or maybe they did take draft picks. I can't I remember. Know. Well, basically, the Red Sox and the Astros both had things taken from them. The Astros had to fire their GM and their head coach. Okay, their head coach sat out an entire year because of that. Um, they lost two years of first and second round picks. They lost internet. They didn't lose international pool money, but they basically, they were punished. The Yankees got a $100,000 fine. And that was it. If the Yankees shame tour doesn't start tomorrow, then that's criminal. I mean, I'm sorry. It's about time that they sit down and we tell them to shut up. And we tell them to take it up the tailpipe like we have for two years. I'm so sick and freaking tired of being called, oh, you're a cheater. 
You're an Astros fan. Y'all ruined baseball. You know what? Forget about it, New York. No, y'all did it too. And y'all been doing it since the beginning of time. You know it. It's in your freaking blood, okay? So build a bridge and get over it. How about this, Yankees? Beat us in the playoffs and then come talk crap. Until you're in our neighborhood and you're not on our front porch, we don't want to hear a damn word because 2009 was a long freaking time ago. All right, so the Astros used a trash can. The Red Sox used a smartwatch. The Yankees used a landline. What's and, really the difference? I mean, it's and, still cheating. And the, and the Dodgers had a guy dressed in an MLB polo trying to set up cameras in Game 5 of the World Series in Houston and got busted. Nobody talks about that crap. Nobody talks about that. The L.A. Dodgers had an employee – of the Dodgers setting up cameras to steal signs in game five of the 2017 World Series. Right. Nobody talks about that. Yeah, Keith Olbermann, I saw this tweet earlier. He actually said that he got banned from something or he lost his media credentials for something. He reported seeing uh, somebody video cameraing at Yankee Stadium. And or so, oh, yeah, I mean, I mean, um, you know, what's his name? Schwab has that has that video of the guy. And of course, the Yankees tried to debunk it. But there was a guy in center field honed in on the freaking catcher's crotch trying to catch the signs he was putting down. And look, the bottom line is this. I have never said it is OK if all these other clubs are doing it and the Astros did it, then it's not a big deal. That's never been my my take. I don't think that's ever been your take. We believe cheating is wrong, breaking the rules is wrong. But what we've object what we've objected to this entire time is how the Astros have been the lightning rod and the and the poignant, like just the heat seeking missile has been on the Astros and the Astros alone. The Dodgers have, I mean, the Red Sox haven't even come close to having what they've thrown at our team. That's just been my stance all along. And even Joe Girardi, Joe Girardi was on the freaking MLB network telling them how they did it, revealing their scheme, how they did it on live TV. Yeah. Well, I like people are saying, well, are the Yankees going to get punished? I don't know. Cause it was Manfred who was the one who was trying to cover everything up. So why would he punish it? The only reason why I think he may punish it is because his reputation may be on the line now. This is why he did not want this letter to come out because, I mean, granted, most of the stuff we already knew, there's not a lot of new stuff in here. It just shows that that the Red Sox, despite being fine, despite him telling teams not to do this, I believe I saw even a, a part in here where the Yankees were still cheating a little bit in 2017. Uh, that despite oh, yeah. everything, the warnings and everything, nobody took him seriously. And yeah. they if, even after that, everything that happened, the Red Sox still cheated in 2018. So as a commissioner, you nobody teams aren't taking you seriously. This is a bad look for baseball. This is it bad is. look for him. It is a bad look for baseball, and it is a bad look for Manfred. And I but for anybody to act surprised, yeah. this is this is what didn't surprise me. Again, was the Yankees fans were like, eh, it's not a big deal. Who cares? Right. We're yeah. not the Astros. I mean, they already have a they already have a guy selling shirts on Twitter or Facebook in New York that says like hate them or something. And the H has like the orange star. It looks like the Astros symbol. So you're going to have thousands of Yankees fans wearing the Astros symbol on their shirt. I'm like, no one is more obsessed with the Astros logo than Dodgers and Yankee fans. How they, they, they make like fake Astros uniforms or they buy uniforms online and then they try to change it to say cheaters. I think that's absolutely hilarious. You know that you are all, you are all up under their skin yeah. and we basically are a pariah to them. And until they dethrone the Astros, until the Astros aren't going to the ALCS, until the Yankees aren't continuing to be defeated at their own game, then you know what? Why the hell are we even talking about it anymore? Right. So I I don't want to dwell too much into that tonight. Yeah. Uh, we can maybe do a special podcast once we look deeper into this. And uh, yeah, I don't maybe, know. I don't know. We'll I see. Think we, nah, I mean, look. Like a short one, maybe. We'll see. We'll yeah. talk about it. We'll, we'll talk about it.
Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, let's uh, tomorrow's game or today's game. It's going to be Christian Javier versus yes. Glenn Otto. Uh, Christian Javier will be making his first start since last year. Um, and so we're, we're going to see what happens in this situation. Will he be a starter? It depends on how Jake Odorizzi does from this point on. If he pitches like he did, did tonight, I don't know. Uh, he could stay around for a while. So, um, But having a deep rotation is not a bad thing. And if the Astros have to go six deep for the rest of the season to keep Justin Verlander healthy for the playoffs, that ain't a bad thing either. So mm -hmm. the Astros offense came alive a little bit tonight. Uh, Jake Odorizzi showed life. No, we're not DFAing him tonight. He he did great, and overall, it was an Astros baseball type of game. So that's all we got. Pedro Baez, hope good luck. We hope you find a new job somewhere. He may just retire, though. <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure retire. there's some team desperate for pitching, but well, that's, well, that's the Astros weird. are so desperate for pitching. They're bringing up Seth Martinez, and uh, don't forget that in uh, what seven days or not even seven days in like six days they're gonna be going down uh, to to 26 players. So oh, that's right, that's right. They they reduce the roster back to to the regular 26. But hey, you know, thank y'all for tuning in to Locked On Astros. We're your team every day. We love hanging out with you guys. We love when y'all come on live. Oh, I forgot to mention tonight. We'll have to bring it up again tomorrow. Next week on Monday, I'm actually, we actually giving away two club tickets to the Monday night game. I have a contest going on Twitter. We'll come back on live after the game. I'll I'll give you some chances to put your name in the hat. If if you're not on Twitter, you can tell me if you can go to the game, then I'll put you in a drawing. Um, I'll put you in a drawing with the people, but you have to be subscribed. You have to show us somehow that you're subscribed to our channel and let us know that. And um, we will enter you into win two club tickets to Monday night's game. And it's the Yuli ALCS ring giveaway as well. All righty. Well, that's all we got for this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. We'll check you out tomorrow and hopefully we'll be talking about another uh, Astros W behind Christian Javier. Ghost Rose.